Yeah. So you're working with Benny, uh, and you're yeah. kind of you're getting your hands dirty. I mean, yeah. as a farmer, you do, but like you're on the the front line of the uh, hospitality industry. Uh, to be really honest, I, was, I started working a few weeks ago at uh, a company. Yeah. I will not name them before they listen, but uh, uh, I started as a gar- warranty, a car warranter, assessor, blah, 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 blah. I yeah. had to do a lot of, like, you know, thinking work. And I noticed I wasn't ready for it because this book is a nice book. It tells you, take the pre-pension. And it was a great experience in my life. But then I learned it's really hard to start working again after doing two years of nothing. Mm, yeah, yeah. So I. So you literally, what was the f- you literally took two years off to do nothing. What do you mean by nothing? Yeah, what did you do in that two years? Party. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but wait, 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 like at a certain you, point, after th- after a couple of weeks, you'd be like, okay. Did you fuck go? It. Did you go? So, did you travel and party, or uh, did you go to a like like? Did you know what you wanted to do in that two years before you did it, or did you just go? I just, I'm gonna try. Whatever comes my way, embrace the random type stuff. I knew I wanted to start a farm. That's the reason I came to Hungary. But I I visited so many Hungarian villages. I partied with locals in the villages. I had the most craziest parties. I love Budapest itself too. And this is a great place to, well, basically. Uh, So you actually got out to the the villages outside of Budapest. So give give us the skinny on your top three. Where would where would you recommend us go outside of uh, Budapest in terms of the to be really the best place for me to go is Kaposvár. Kaposvár, yeah, Kaposvár. Kaposvár. Let's have a look. Where is that? How do you spell it? Uh, just like you, you know. Come on, Kaposvár. Cappuccino. K a p o s or o i. Kaposvár. Yes. City in Hungary. So why why this place? <laughs> It's really it's beautiful. Small. It's small, but beautiful. It's yeah. really strange because you're really in the countryside, but it's a pretty rich town. It it's looks really beautiful. Green. People are really friendly. And during the lockdown, there were no restrictions. I was drinking uh, on the terrace while everybody here in Hungary, Hungary, Budapest, was locked up. I was drinking my beer nicely on the terrace. It was a great place to be. And the villages around it are also really nice. The police coverage is really well, so everybody is behaving really nice through the roofs. It's um, like a community. Did you? Uh, where did you stay when you were there? Actually, in a, a really small village next door, uh, called N- Nachbayo. But what were you did you stay? There? But did you stay at an Airbnb or a hotel? Or did you bed and rent breakfast. rent a short rental or bed and breakfast? Bed and breakfast. Yeah. Bed and breakfast. What is this? You know, where you wake up, they make you a breakfast. And then you get the fuck out. Of yeah, that's my everyday life. Oh. <laughs> but you were there long term, so you got like a. Or how long were you there for? Um, sometimes I went there for two weeks. Sometimes I went there for a week. It depended on the time. And did you get to know? Like, did the locals get to know you? Did you become like a mysterious uh, stranger from outside lands, and they kind of I've, I've had really you at their dinner tables? And it's pretty hard to gale penetrate. them with tales of. It's really hard to penetrate these communities because you're an outsider. But it was really funny because in Najbayon, uh, I went to the cafe like for three days, but they re- weren't really accepting me. And after this, I found the gypsy cafe. Many Hungarians are telling me, oh, don't meet the gypsies, they're bad. Da, 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 da. Yeah, same. So I, I didn't care. So I just went to a gypsy cafe, which I thought it was a cafe, but it turned out it was a supermarket. And you just drink your beer from the supermarket, in front of the supermarket. And that's nice. At least you're drinking in the terrace. <laughs> and it was so great. There. Tell us about the gypsies the, that you made friends with over there, because not enough people kind of give have an actual insight into their oh. into their world and culture, and can can have an informed opinion about it. I think it's, there's a big difference because uh, for me, I come already as a out, outsider, so I'm not a Hungarian. I don't have the, uh, any how do you say this uh, bad doubts about a hung- about a Hungarian pre expectations or no pre- expect- pre prejudice. Yes. And when I met them, they were actually really nice people. People told me, uh, don't take your phone out with them, or they will steal it. I took my phone out, nothing happened. You know, they were really nice. The most funniest thing was when I took my phone out, it was to use Google Translate. Who are we? Uh, <laughs> did, you, did you manage to yeah use, use Google Translate as a means to communicate the most properly? Like, you know, yes, like we, we could use it for pro- a proper way. But the most funniest thing was at the moment I was using Google Translate, which is called here Google 40 gosh, 20 gypsies were surrounding me and start filming them with their Huawei phones, which is a smartphone. And they were filming me and asking me, talk again to the application, talk again to it. <laughs> and I told them, this is a free application. <laughs> and they were shocked. Wow. At that moment, 
I got 20 phones in my hand, all gypsies. <laughs> I gave them my phone and I had to install Google 40 Touch on their phones. <laughs> So if some tourist ever goes to Nach Bayon now, now they know every, every you were gypsy. you were the Rosetta Stone. You were just literally the, the, the fucking most, ob- yeah. the, the most funniest thing is the actual Hungarians don't know this, yet, but the, uh, the gypsies do, do know it. So nowadays the gypsies are actually a better. Wow, that's 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 interesting he because now for the yeah yeah I'm dude trying. you had a direct <laughs> impact on. And them. the funniest thing was after this I was really accepted by the gypsies because you're basically like trying to help them or you, you know you're you're making your an effort you're making an effort. I was welcome with everybody uh, everywhere I went with the bike I was I was biking a lot in this village and everywhere I would go they would invite me for a beer and you will know that you're a true friend from a gypsy. If you get Kobani, which is like the cheapest beer you can buy, yeah. in a two and a half liter pet bottle, uh, and they will give you a dirty, dirty glass to drink it from, and this is the moment you know you're a friend. Wow! Hey, look, tell us about that moment because, like, did you go, wait, what the fuck is this? Like, what? what how did you know that that was actually a positive uh, affirmation that you're their friend? Uh, by talking to the like, the funniest thing is. After this moment, I became friends with the gypsies. Suddenly, the Hungarian people wanted to know, hey, who is this guy? Like, I was not befriending them, I was befriending the gypsies. And they didn't like that. Yeah. So suddenly, all the Hungarians were invi- starting to invite me too. They wanted to know more about, hey, Curious. who is this crazy Dutch guy? And they accepted me fully. And then I was telling them, you know, like I was drinking with them, the Kobani from a dirty class. And then they said, oh, yeah, then you're welcome. Ah, right. They wouldn't share their beer with you. If they wouldn't like you, because come on, these people don't have a, you know, a beer is a beer. It's not that cheap for them. So they mm. wouldn't share with you if they don't like you. Wow. Wow. Or they want something from you, but I wouldn't give them anything. So but did they test you with that? Like, were there times where they would kind of prod you a little bit to see if they could get anything out of you? Uh, depending on the person. Yes, there are some older gypsies who are living alone and they're pretty desperate. So, of course, they are always trying, but most of them, they were actually trying to ask them if you have any ID for them to earn money. They were actually asking you, asking do for you know opportunities. ID? Yeah, do you know ID or do you know what I can do? Yeah. Because when I was asking them, most of the gypsies, they own like one hectare of land behind their house and they're mm. doing nothing with it. Mm. And well, they're always at home. So I was always asking, why are you not doing anything with your land? Even if it's just like, you know, building your own salad or tomatoes or anything. And it just turned out they don't have the intellectual uh, opportunities or mm. they don't know how to do it so they don't know what they don't know yes yeah, they need someone to lead them yes or show them yeah yeah show yeah. them how to fish yeah it's like, it's like the chinese mentality they don't give you the fish but they show you how to get the fish mm. Mm. have you had any dealings with the gypsies in budapest yeah i've Is never it? had like a bad experience with gypsies man um for four years you yeah, have never had once uh, they're fucking cool, man. I'm like, I go to barbers where I go to uh, places where there's a lot of gypsies, and they're fucking cool. It's, it's just as soon as you start understanding their, their the way they think and all of that, you know, they're just like normal people. But unfortunately, they're not provided with the right opportunities for uh, to develop their intellectual skills. What I what I when one of the gypsies once told me that uh, if the the father didn't go to uh, to his school. That means the son cannot have an, a better education than his dad. That that means, which is uh, a bit intriguing, because it, it keeps the whole family under a level on education, an analphabet, and that's why. Wait, so if the father hasn't gone to an educational institution, the son cannot. Not. Yeah, and they get married at a really young age, so 13, 14 years old, and so you, this is why you see this little gypsies goes around pregnant by the age of 13, 14 years old. Hmm. And uh, which is uh, it's quite similar to some tribes back in Africa in the early ages, mm-hmm. and it's, and uh, it's still persisting. So they kept they kept close to their roots and their principles, but but unfortunately they, they didn't adapt to the society. So they didn't they, they were not like water, like Bruce Lee said, like you had to be water and adapt and fit in in the community. They they isolated themselves, and also the government also isolated them. So that's why they kept in this image and this uh, stereotypes image of people in their mind. Mm. You know, 